I was so angry. I never really thought that I could get past my past. God is bigger than your mistakes, your inadequacies, and your past. I was a young woman that was full of unforgiveness, that was full of bitterness, that was full of shame and guilt. Hear how you can live unashamed. Shame off you. The world says shame on you, but I'm declaring shame off you. Plus, we'll be talking about the new Pokemon craze. All on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. A game called Pokemon Go has launched and become an international phenomenon. It's the first mass market video game to successfully blend the real world and the digital world together in a way that the public is going crazy about, Terry. Well, it's now the most popular app in history. History! Once you download the app, Pokemon, including cuddly yellow Pikachu, suddenly pop up. The app uses the player's phone GPS to locate where they are and then makes Pokemon appear on the phone screen in real life locations so players can catch all 151 virtual creatures. Anyone nearby can capture them by aiming the phone and swiping it. People of all ages are walking around with their phones, finding poke, poke stops and gyms at places of interest like libraries, parks, art galleries, subway stations, zoos, and lots more. Including my office, Terry. The other day, somebody <laughs> no, walked in. No, 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 no. They were kind of joking around, but literally <laughs> someone walked in with their phone and said, are there any Pokemons in here? And I said, of course not. And, you know, he had downloaded <laughs> it. It's a bizarre moment at CBN. I know some players have been sharing all sorts of bizarre places the app has been taking them, like to toilet stalls, mm. funerals, graveyards, baseball fields, and the Church of Scientology, just to name a few. People love playing it. Take a look. I'm 100% hooked. I like the game so much, I, f I'm, I like playing the game every day. It's very nostalgic. Yeah. And the idea that now we can wander around and like be the trainer instead of controlling the trainer, mm -hmm. it's like a fantasy we've all had since we were nine. <laughs> Unbelievable. A ranger for the National Mall and Memorial Parks showed players where they can catch Pokemon, while officials urged visitors to refrain from being disrespectful to other visitors and memorials. The U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum asked people not to play the game during visits, saying that it was extremely inappropriate in a place that honors victims. And the Arlington National Cemetery has also asked players not to use those sacred places as Pokemon stomping grounds. Well, as the game does inspire players to be outdoors, some real-life animals are feeling the benefits. Two players in Texas paid a visit to a local park in Houston in hopes of stumbling upon some Pokemon. Instead, they found dozens of pets trapped in cages with no owner in sight. Most of the pets were suffering from heat exhaustion. And rather than leave them to die, they took them home and gave them food and water. All of the 27 abandoned animals found in the park managed to survive. That was their lucky day. You know, this isn't the first pet rescue that's been facilitated by this game that we're talking about. Two other Pokemon Go users found and rescued an injured puppy that they just might have otherwise missed if they hadn't been looking, if it weren't for the app inspiring them to walk through a park where that puppy was. And interestingly, churches have also benefited because they've become essential stops for Pokemon Go players. And some have become water stops or gyms for players as well. This could be good news for millennial-starved churches across the country. According to Pew Research, a third of millennials are not religiously affiliated, but that could now change since Pokemon Go is literally driving players out of their homes and to the doorsteps of local churches. Pastors are trying to find the best way to connect with these players, including Rick Warren, pastor of the Saddleback Church. He tweeted this, inviting Pokemon trainers to his church. Churches are also using their signs to attract gamers, finding creative ways to invite them in, and encouraging them to find Jesus as they find Pokemon. The Granbury First Methodist Church in Texas hosted an event at a local park for people that were playing the popular game. They served free hot dogs, chips, and water, along with plug strips so everybody could continue to charge their phones. And we want to thank Hood County Free Press for those pictures. I think that's very, very creative. Yeah, churches are finding a lot of people literally on their doorstep now. Yeah. <laughs> However you wander in, you're welcome. <laughs> I remember um, 
of course, the 90s Pokemon making its appearance. And then a few years ago, my boys came to me and they said, uh, you know, and they were seven or eight at the time, and they said, we don't know what to do. None of the kids want to play football. At recess, they want to play Pokemon. We're just talking about the mm -hmm. cards here. Yeah. And so we talked through it, et cetera. And I said, you know, it'll, it'll probably eventually yeah. <laughs> pass. And the card craze did pass with their classmates, but now this whole new thing has yeah. come about and it's taken over the nation. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting to me. What's really interesting, even more than what we've looked at here, is the number of adults that are doing this. I don't know what they do for a living, but I can't imagine having time to wander yeah. around neighborhoods and parks and... Well, and that's one of the, the positive things people have said about this, is it's getting people out of the house. They're not sitting home well, playing a video good. game online. Mm -hmm. They're out, they're walking, they're doing things. But of course, you're having situations where people are getting bit by snakes, they're getting run over <laughs> by cars crossing the highway because they're looking down at their phone. Yeah. Um, there have been some dangerous things that have come about, but certainly people have taken their interest to a whole new level. Yeah. And it's uh, really led to some unexpected consequences as well, since people really are not paying attention. Take a look. We've seen crews of kids, we've seen them right into their phones, not really watching where they're walking, and that's kind of a concern for us. Part of the app is to lure you to these places that are in your local community so you can hopefully catch Pokemon. And bringing all these people together in one place could have safety concerns of its own. People who are really distracted on their phones and kind of easily, uh, easy targets to swipe things from. <laughs> Since players wander around with their eyes glued to their smartphones at all hours of the day and night, People are tripping and falling. Two men in San Diego walked off a cliff while playing. They did live. Yeah. The game has also led to police reports of people even trespassing on private property, like this couple who trespassed at a zoo. <laughs> Weren't thinking, just wanted to catch them all. We were walking just... by the zoo and we were just like, all right, let's do let's it. Do it. it was that. harmless fun. We didn't mean to try to cause trouble. We were just yeah, bored. <laughs> Everything we've said so far seems to be harmless fun, but gamers are even being robbed at gunpoint. And a woman found the body of a man in a river near her home while she was out playing the game. Since the release of the smartphone game, police have gotten a lot of calls from residents about possible burglars prowling in their neighborhood. Some players have warned about racism and the suspicion people of color may face while exploring neighborhoods. But others have found the game to help with weight loss. I want to hear about that one. Well, I guess <laughs> maybe just getting up off the couch and bringing their families together. I don't know. And then, of course, you know, some of the in the Christian community are saying, is this something we should advocate against or yeah. before or somewhere in the middle? And we're going to talk about some tips in a moment. But, you know, it really just the whole scenario of what's going on in the craze, it does kind of remind us and cause us to reflect on the fact that what we as humanity try and yeah. We search for something, right? Something to exactly. excite us, give us a passion about something. We're, we're interacting with other people. And it just really shows, and people are doing this for fun, but it really just shows that a lot of us are, have an emptiness we're trying to fill with something. Well, you know, some of that might be that we live in such a technology-prone world, just generally speaking, that we've kind of isolated ourselves by that. I mean, we talk about these guys walking off the cliff, but we've seen people walk into water fountains with their phones and, you know, just addicted to texting and things. So when you see pictures of people who are getting to know each other in parks and doing this, I mean, that's a positive thing. But it is like there is something in us that is on a drive to get meaning or something. And you can certainly determine the value of something by how much yeah. time you put into it, right? There and, ought and, to be yeah. some monitoring of that. And for <laughs> Christians who are asking, is this something I should stay away from? Is this something my family can do? I think that's a good question to ask. How much time is really being devoted to it? As opposed to the fact that Jesus called us to follow him, right? Yeah. He told Peter, mm -hmm. follow me when he first met him. And then um, near the end of Jesus' ministry, he said again, Peter, follow me. We know that's such an important call from yeah. God, where our priorities should exactly. be. So Terry are not, and I are not in endorsing playing this game. But if you're going to play, we really want to urge you to consider the following precautions, okay? So first, create a separate Google profile to log in because Pokemon Go requests access to your personal Gmail profile in order to play the game. So this means users are already providing a large amount of personal information. Also, number two, be aware of your surroundings. Seems obvious, but it's good to remember. And third, 
don't wander around in areas you're unfamiliar with, especially with your head down staring at your yeah. phone. And be respectful of other people's property. I mean, you really could find yourself, especially at night, in a precarious scenario if you're just walking around the property of people who don't know you, don't expect you to be there. Don't be foolish about it. Don't play the game alone. And don't let your kids play alone. And finally, set a time limit for your child if your child's involved in this. It, you need to keep priorities in order, I think. And kids need our help in learning how to do that. Well, the key is making sure to stay alert, use common sense when you're playing this. And remember, even in the world of virtual reality, you still have to abide by the rules of the real world. And you heard Terry and I share our thoughts on this topic, but we encourage you to head over to Facebook to hear from some of our producers who are going to be talking about this, streaming live from the studio. Don't miss it. Make sure you check out 700 Club Interactive's Facebook page right after this show. Terry? Well, still to come, evangelist Christine Kane tells us how you can go from shameful to shame-free. Shame off you. The world says shame on you, but I'm declaring shame off you. Plus, we'll be praying for you and for your family, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, shame can take on many forms. It can hide in the shadows of the most successful, confident, and high-achieving person, as well as in the heart of those who've been abused or abandoned. Shame can hold us back in ways that we don't even realize. But evangelist Christine Kane says we can all be shame free. Take a look. You know, when I was born, I was left in a hospital unnamed and unwanted. I experienced sexual abuse at the hands of many different men for over a decade of my life. I was a young woman that was full of unforgiveness, that was full of bitterness, that was full of shame and guilt and condemnation. I was so angry. I never really thought that I could get past my past, but then I encountered the reality of a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I discovered that my past does not need to define my future, that I am not the workman of someone else's mistake, but that I am God's workmanship. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says that we are God's workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Although a whole lot of bad things were done to me, I was able to make what Jesus did for me greater than what anyone else had done to me. Because of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross, because of that blood that was shed at Calvary, I am able to move beyond the abuse and the pain and the struggle and the unforgiveness and the brokenness of my past into the awesome future that Jesus Christ died to give me. He came not just so that I could exist, but so that we could have life and life more abundant. I want to encourage you, no matter what has happened to you, no matter what mistakes you have made, no matter what failures you have made, I want you to know that if you woke up this morning and there's still breath in your lungs, it is not too late. Your life is not over. God has a plan. He has a purpose. He has a destiny for you. The enemy is a liar, but he is very loud. You need to replace the loud lies of the enemy with the truth of God that's found in His Word. You are not an accident. You were created on purpose for a purpose. You are God's workmanship. You are created in the image of God and filled with God-given purpose and destiny. The same Jesus that came to this unnamed, unwanted, broken, ashamed young woman, wiped away the mess of my past, gave me a brand new life and a hope and a future. That same Jesus is right there with you now. He can give you a life beyond your past. I want to declare what Jesus Christ declared over your life. He said, shame off you. The world says shame on you, but I'm declaring shame off you in Jesus' name. You know, shame is the kind of thing that penetrates not just our hearts, it penetrates our thinking. It begins to define how we see ourselves, how we think the world sees us, and then begins to impact what we think our value is. And I love what Christine had to say. You know, God created you and nothing that's happened to you, nothing that anyone else has done to you, nothing you've done to yourself can change the fact that you were made with purpose and a plan in the image and likeness of the living God. He is your dad and his arms are wide open for you to come to him and say, I need you. I have been hurt, wounded, broken, or I have blown it. I have fallen on my face and I need a fresh beginning. That's what God is all about, redemption, taking what's been lost and redeeming it and giving a new start. 
How do you go to that place that Christine talked about? You just speak to him. He's here with you right now. You just say, Jesus, I get that you died for me. I get that you died for my sin, for the pain of what's been done to me, for the pain of what I've done to others. And today I recognize I need you. Come into my heart, forgive my sins, give me a new beginning and show me how to live for you. Here's the great thing about that prayer. Then ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit because the power to live differently, to change and to receive what God wants to give you is a gift from God in the form of the Holy Spirit. And it's yours for the asking. If you would like to pray with someone today about a need in your life, our number's toll free. It's right there on your screen, 1-888-777-1999. Just call and say, I've got a need and I'd like to pray with someone. There's a friend on the other end of that line who's prayed the prayer we just talked about. Andrew? Thank you, Terry. Well, coming up, meet the woman who was nine years old in this unforgettable photo. Hear her miraculous survival story and see how an amazing new technology is helping to heal her pain and scars. All that's next, right after this. Stay with us. Well, it's one of the most famous photos ever. The image of a Vietnamese girl running naked in the street after a napalm bomb exploded in her neighborhood. That was 1972. Today, she still lives with the scars from that horrible tragedy. But a new treatment is giving her hope. And CBN's Wendy Griffith brings us that story. Who can forget this picture? Nine-year-old Kim Phuc trying to outrun her burning flesh after the South Vietnamese dropped a napalm bomb on her village. Her burns were so bad the doctors gave her zero chance of survival and took her body to the morgue. But Kim Phuc wasn't ready to die. My parents found me there. In the morgue? Yeah. But you weren't dead? I, I had not died yet. But you know, God had a plan for me. Yeah. Uh, he not finished with me yet. Today, Kim is 53. Her beautiful kimono hides the deep scars on her back and arms while her beautiful smile <laughs> tries to hide the pain she still deals with daily. I had 17 operations. Kim spoke to a group of doctors and plastic surgeons in Washington, D.C. recently about the day that changed her life. The fire everywhere around me and my, my clothes were burned by the fire. I thought about the moment, oh my goodness, I, I would be ugly and people would see me different way, but I was so terrified. And then I got, you know, I ran out of that fire. Four decades after that horrible day, Kim has new hope that her scars can not only look better, but feel better. Her biggest problem, which has been such a great thing about the laser, is her, she has pain. And that's from where the napalm stuck to her and then caught on fire. It's really terrible. Dr. Jill Weibel, a Miami dermatologist, discovered that lasers can effectively treat burn scars by reducing pain and increasing mobility. Lasers actually made burns and trauma scars worse. And so it wasn't until this new invention of the fractional laser where the laser has little tiny holes that vaporize the tissue and then the normal skin heals it. That actually is a game changer for burn and trauma patients. It heals the skin to almost normal. It takes a series of treatments, but it really is the most amazing technology I think that burn and trauma survivors have had in over 100 years. Kim has already had four of the seven treatments she needs. And my scar is getting much lighter and softer. And that is give me hope that a year from now, I will be free of the pain and my scar look much better. The maker of the laser, Luminous, helped kick off the Restoring Heroes Initiative, a program designed to help people like Kim and other war heroes receive this life-changing laser treatment. Although the technology is out there, unless you're paying out-of-pocket money, which is very, very expensive for all these veterans, then they cannot be treated. So we are very, very proud to be working together with Restoring Heroes and trying to get a code that will allow, you know, all these uh, veteran hospitals, and there are like 99 veteran hospitals, to, to treat actually all these people. Despite the fear no one would want her, 
Kim married and has two sons. She says her conversion from the Cao Dai religion to Christianity at the age of 19 changed everything. How did that help you forgive the people who dropped the bombs that burned you? The picture of Jesus Christ when they 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 put him on the cross and they kill him. So Jesus say, Father, forgive them that they don't know what they're doing. So that picture, that word, it just say, Lord, help me to do the same thing like you did and give me the power, give me a strength, give me compassion to do that. And then I started to pray for my enemies. And the more I pray for my enemies, the softer my heart became. Dr. David McDaniel, a pioneer in laser technology, says Kim's story reminds him that although doctors and nurses treat the outside, it's Jesus who heals the heart. There's a very famous uh, sign at a mission hospital in Africa that, that the doctors and the nurses treat, but Jesus heals. And, you know, we use the lasers and the power to help heal her scars, but really Jesus healed her heart. Kim says this famous Pulitzer Prize photo that the Vietnamese government once used as a propaganda tool to control her is now a blessing that she can use to reach the world. That picture is became the powerful gift for me. I can work with it for peace, for good. Wendy Griffith, CBN News. Wow, well, Kim is such a lovely and beautiful lady, and the love of Jesus, Terry, just oh, shines wow. forth. And watching her get emotional, thinking of what Christ did on the cross for us, for her, and having that uh, transmitted into her forgiveness for others, a remarkable oh. thing. You know, earlier we were talking about being set free and she is set free from a lot. I mean, God can do such amazing things if we let him. Well, viewers like you are helping people all over the world, like this desperate mom from Vietnam. When her husband first looked at their baby, he almost passed out, and their neighbors called the child a monster. Sure Sien moved from Vietnam to China to find a job to support her aging parents. She soon married and became pregnant. Then five months into her pregnancy, she got bad news. The doctor said he couldn't see my baby's nose in the ultrasound, and he would have a severe clipped lip, so I could just go ahead and abort him. But I would never do that. He was flesh of my flesh. For the first few months, Shur Sien had to take care of Shun Shang by herself because her husband worked long hours as a brick maker. I almost passed out the first time I saw my son. When I first brought Shun home, I heard neighbors whispering behind my back. She's Vietnamese. That's why she gave birth to a monster. So Shur Sien kept her baby away from people as much as possible. I told Shun not to listen to what other people said, but really, I was terrified for him. Shun could barely eat. He was malnourished and hungry all the time. I was really worried that he wouldn't survive. And if he did, everyone said he would be mute. I knew he needed surgery, but that cost way more than we had. So one day at 2 a.m., when my baby was asleep, I prayed, God, please provide surgery for my son. Then. A few days later, out of blue, I got a phone call from CBN. We told Shur CN that we were sponsoring cleft lip and palate operations and that her son was invited to receive free surgery. I was in tears. I feel like I was in heaven and God had heard my prayers. Shun came out of surgery looking like a brand new boy. Now he won't be a mute and he'll be calling me daddy any day. I know she will have a bright future now. Because of your help, my son is completely healed. Today, my home is filled with laughter. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. You have shown us that true love knows no borders. That was made possible because of friends like you who said, we want to join with CBN and make a difference in the needs of people around the world. This little family had such a great need and no possible way of ever correcting it. 
you stepped right into the middle of that. What does it mean to be a 700 Club member? 65 cents a day, $20 a month. But when thousands of us do that together, we can touch thousands and thousands of lives. If you're not a 700 Club member yet, today's a great day to join. Go to your phone and call this toll-free number. 888-777-1999, or you can join by logging on to 700clubinteractive.com. But decide today to do something to make a difference. Andrew? Well, Terry and I love to pray for you, and we want to do that now. We have received prayer requests from our Facebook page, including from Rachel, who writes, God, I need you. I need a financial breakthrough because my daughter needs medicine, and I don't have the money to pay for it. Please make a way. Also, Evelyn, who says, my son Michael has leukemia. I pray that the bone marrow transplant will be as scheduled and that he will be completely healed and restored. Please pray that God will also remove all the fears that I have. And finally, Michelle writes, please pray for my husband. He has early onset Alzheimer's. I also need to find a job and we need to find housing. Not sure what your needs are, but Terry and I delight in praying for you. So let's go to the Lord now. Father God, we have dear viewers and people on Facebook with us who desire a touch from you, Lord God, your healing touch, you as provider, Father. First, we lift up Rachel, who needs a financial breakthrough. For a child who needs medicine and they don't have the money for it, Father God, bring that resource into their life, Father God. We ask from friends or family or a perfect stranger, someone to make that possible, Lord, Lord God, for the medicine. And Lord God, we know you are healer, and we pray your Holy Spirit is active and moving on behalf of this dear family. Lord God, for Evelyn, whose son has leukemia. Jesus, we know you are a healer. By your stripes, we are healed. Father God, we ask your Holy Spirit now to touch this precious family and bring about a physical healing. And we cast out fear and anxiety. We bind it in the name of Jesus, and we speak healing, Thank you, God. and we speak peace in Jesus' name. And finally, Michelle, whose husband has Alzheimer's coming about, Lord God. We pray for this couple. We rebuke that dreadful Alzheimer's in Jesus' name. Lord God, the cries of these people and the cries of this audience reach you, Lord. We know you love us. You care for us. You hear our cry. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We leave you with Isaiah 54, verse 4. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame, for you will forget the shame of your youth. We'll see you tomorrow.